Okay. So lighting 103. So we have a good group with us. So how many of you guys have done lighting stuff already? I'm not sure. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, now, I Cody doesn't know a thing. When I was in sixth grade, lighting was the easiest thing back in the booth. So nice. Yeah, I have in the past, yes. Nice. Cool. So um, today we're going to dive into like consoles. And so the reason why we're going to be in here is because not everybody can sit around the console up in the light booth anyway. So might as well meet in here. And this is in more of the venues that you guys would be spending more time in. So, um, And it's just... Basically, this, it is the same thing as the, the main auditorium. So, so I have a couple things uh, we're going to talk through in regards to consoles in general, and then we're going to dive into setting up a show file. So that way you guys can get familiar with like how fixtures are put into the board and stuff like that. So the first thing we're going to talk about is consoles. So there's a whole array of consoles that are out there. So the one that we particularly work with is the Grand MA. This, like you guys have seen in the our different venues, but we used to have consoles like that one back there, the ETC 2448, which is a uh, glory to behold with all those faders. Um, Cody really likes that. that's his favorite board. Um, but it can go from like a, you know, a 12, 24 channel controller up to, um, <laughs> I found this out, PRG, which is a lighting uh, company has a desk that does 702 universes. So that's 702 times 512 is how many addresses uh, uh, it can control. So uh, pretty big setup. Um, and so there's two different varieties. There's the hardware-based controller, which is like that one back there, which um, you, know, you push a fader and it moves uh, a dimmer. Otherwise, there's the software base, which is like the Grand MA on PC, which this is kind of like a hybrid because it has a hardware surface, but you can do 100% of the um, uh, setup and stuff like that within the software just with a mouse and keyboard. So um, just as kind of a reminder, I think we talked about this already, but a DMX is a protocol um, that lighting uses, and it uses 512 addresses per universe. Right, Cody? Is the addresses or I was with the whole Grand MA parameters thing. It's just like, addresses. yeah. So 512 addresses per universe. Each address uh, controls um, like a, a dimming channel. So like this is, uh, it goes from one to 255 is its range that it controls. So each um, channel or um, parameter has that. And so... Um, there's also, uh, with DMX, there's different ways to set it out. So there's um, DMX, like a DMX cable, um, that just a copper cable, like a mic cable, or like up here we have the five pin uh, cable that we talked about last time. So there's also a way to do it over network. So different companies have their own like proprietary network uh, control stuff that, you, that they send uh, DMX over. And there's also ArtNet, which is a network-based protocol for DMX as well. And then there's, I can't even pronounce the last one, S-A-C-N. That's what he said. So um, we don't use that last one, but um, I don't know if you've even tried to. Artnet's just nice. So, um, so with consoles, there's basically two different kinds of consoles. There's tracking consoles and there's preset consoles. So when you, um, it's probably easier to explain preset first. Um, so a preset is a pre-configured look. So all the parameters within that look are recorded. So like when you go into the main auditorium or the box, the wall panel, that's a preset button. It's recording or it's playing back what's recorded on that preset. If uh, the light's at zero, it's recorded at zero. If it's um, at 100%, it's recorded at 100%. So that's kind of a preset. It records that whole look, and then it plays that whole look back. So if you go from look to look, everything is recorded, and it plays back everything. So like if you have five lights at you know, 0 or 100, and you have five lights um, at 0 and 100 in the next preset, that um, they will then... Um, take this look and then go to this look. So you just have to remember that 
even at zero, it's a recorded number. Um, tracking is a little bit different. It's kind of like wall switches where if it's on, it's on. And the, what, um, the only thing it does next is it, it moves or it turns off um, when it's told to. So you could have like a, um, like if you had five cues and you had the lights on in Q1, but you didn't say it to do anything until Q3, but you had maybe some other lights over here that did change to Q2. These would stay on and continue to stay on through until it's told to change. So, and the, the image here is a little bit helpful. Um, so this is what an old tracking uh, dimmer used to look like. So it used to be that they had these dimmers and one man controlled like these eight things. Um, but basically, like they would stay in the position until they were told to move because there's no reason to lay like, oh, you know, put it back to full even though it's already at full. So that's kind of the mindset behind tracking is that it doesn't change, it's called the move fade. So it doesn't move until it's told to. Um, so uh, our board uh, here is a tracking board. That board is a preset based board. Um, and there's a whole variety of different boards out there. Um, that do either or, and there's benefits to both. And actually, MA is kind of somewhat of a hybrid in a little bit of ways, so. Um, so yeah, the cool thing about this one too, and if you look at it, you can see he's moving this bar there, uh, and he's controlling uh, a number of them. So what he's doing is twisting it to lock it into that bar, and then he's moving them together instead of having four hands control those four. So that's a cool uh, image. So um, MA is a little bit in hybrid that, uh, that it is a tracking board. So it doesn't do any changes until it's told to. So instead of other boards where it's, you know, each individual look is recorded all the parameters. Um, so we're gonna um, talk through a little bit about the MA stuff. So. You guys are probably familiar at looking with this if you've seen it in the box and whatnot, that this is our basically how our board kind of looks. So um, we're gonna work on this side of it. This is how it looks. So coming up to the decks, there's a couple different things to, to note that basically this whole window here uh, is configurable and you'll see this on all the desks within um, are different venues. So it's basically user defined windows. So you can basically tell it what you want to look at in there. And so if you right click within this kind of window, you have all of these different uh, um, windows that you can put in there. So there's sheets. So if you want to look at like all the channels that you have, um, which are like dimmers, and then uh, DMX. So like um, what the console is actually outputting for DMX. Uh, fixtures are like these types of things that are multiple parameter um, lights. So not j everything except for a dimmer. Um, sequence uh, and all that kind of stuff. Pools. So here you have uh, your effects pool. Um, the, one of the major ones is groups here. That's how you can kind of lump a, a number of fixtures together into one um, group. There's presets here. So there's dynamic, which I just found out is, um, I think it shows you what uh, presets are actually being used in that queue, if I remember right. Um, all, basically, it you can record a look. So like, I want these fixtures at this color in this position, um, at the speed, all that kind of stuff is saved into an all one. So that can be useful. So um, like on weekends, stuff like that, I have a meaning to make a like a message um, look. So that way I could save that in here. And so whenever somebody needs to recall that um, look, they just tap that all preset um, for message and it pulls up everything. Uh, dimmer, position, gobo, color, beam, um, focus, control, shapers, and video are all different. Um, presets that we can um, record. Um, and those are different pools. 
So, and then there's also playback uh, here. So um, you'll, you'll recognize this. This is kind of how the, the board looks. Um, there are a number of these layers that you can use. So you can use a bunch of different layers to control different um, lights, or you can have different cue stacks So for um, worship and stuff like that. So for SALT, uh, the Spring SALT conference, um, I had each night had its own fader page, and then I had each song on its own fader, um, on its own sequence uh, executor. So that way I could um, then copy those executors to another page if we had the same song on another night, then I could just group it and order it that way. And that seemed to work out okay. So a couple of windows to look at. Um, other here, one of the main ones I use is color picker. So you can, um, you know, take your lights and, you know, kind of run through all the colors. This is a great way if you have a, a light fixture that doesn't quite match, but you don't want, it's a little bit harder maybe to, you know, work with the color wheels where it's like, okay, pull a little bit of red out. No, that's not quite right. Um, this is a little bit faster potentially. Um, within this one, there's even swatch books so like gels if you guys have seen um, like upstairs and stuff like that there's different gels that you can do um, and these are all put in here so you can if you're having to match a gel color um, for like ellipsoidals or any kind of theater stuff you can do that here um, there's also these level wheels so you can um, or these what do you call these cody i don't know, I don't know either these bar graph looking things. Color faders. Color, raw, color faders, yeah, there you go. That's, that one is really nice. Uh, I know in, like, in the main art, in most of the venues will have this one up somewhere because like, for instance, these lights we have here are, have red, green, blue, and then a white. And you actually, most of the time, like you can use like, so above, above the faders, or above all the buttons, there's like, you have encoders, which we can control certain attributes with. But you have to actually change pages. Pages on those encoders usually get to like white or mm -hmm. some other odd colors. Or like in the main auditorium, some of our like lights that are on the columns actually have seven different colors in them just to change pages. Whereas this will just continue to grow, and so you can see all of them. So it's a little bit better to work with. Yep. Um, and there's the predefined colors. So here's all the different ways you can do colors. So you can do hue and saturation. So you can actually go this way, which is kind of more like photo type thing. Um, there's also CMY, which is subtractive. So you can see how when I turn up cyan, it gets rid of red. When I turn up magenta, it gets rid of green. And when I turn up yellow, it gets rid of blue. And so they go black. So that's subtractive. So, um, you know, if you, that's how um, our two, 250s that are in there, that's how those work um, is on a CMY. Um, color mixing. Um, so one of the other nice things in here is that Cine color or er, MA colors. So kind of a easy bank of colors to work with. So we'll show you guys how to do presets here with those in a second um, after we finish through here. Um, so in here as well, there's also um, layout view so you can even see visually like where your lights are and um, on the stage here the stage layout uh, this layout view is um, you can basically put little boxes of where your lights are kind of in the order that they are and it shows you like what color they're in what intensity they're at and stuff like that um, it can be kind of helpful so that we don't have to remember numbers for the lights and stuff like that you can visually then um, program the lights um, there's also system, so this is where you can look at like how the desk is doing and if it's using too much RAM or not um, and stuff like that. So so we're actually gonna start from scratch here. So each of these presets can be recorded in three different ways. There's universal, which means that it'll be re applied to all fixtures that are within your show, uh, regardless of what it is. So it'll just kind of blanket, you want a blue look, Here's a blue look, and it kind of does it on all of them. And this means that it might not actually be, the blues in different lights might not be the same, and so you have to be kind of careful of that. Global, um, 
corresponds to a fixture type. So like if you have a group of fixtures that are the same, then it would uh, apply to all of those uh, same type fixtures. And then they're selective, which means it you apply it to a singular fixture or a group of fixtures that you select. Um, so like if you had half of one kind of fixture that you wanted to do with this one color or position, uh, you can record it that way. So let's set up a desk. So um, on our board here, I'll quick give a, a rundown. Um, so here you have your faders, um, your executors um, here, uh, and then you have your, your main kind of go button right here. And you can uh, basically tell the board what you want these buttons to control uh, by using select and then selecting the Q stack that you have um, built. Um, here's the number pad. So this is how you kind of do intensities and that kind of stuff. Since this is a um, command line based console that you can even type in all these commands with the keyboard and have it do it as well. You don't need like this um, to do it. So uh, there's uh, this top section here is kind of we're going to jump next with there's tools um, that allows you basically to change users and stuff like that. So you can have different users have different layouts and setups and stuff like that. Um, and then there's backup. This is how you uh, load your show. So you can see like load show, um, save show, all that kind of stuff. So that's within backup. And actually one of the nice things is if you double tap it, it will then save the show for you. So it's kind of a shortcut uh, that way. So. so we're gonna go into setup menu. So here within the setup menu, you'll see uh, that there is this patch and fixture schedule. What you'll do is you come in here and you'll name a layer. So each layer can be like a different group of fixtures. Uh, these guys up here are uh, X4S's, um, GLP, I believe, right? So X4S. Um, and within this, you can select from library here. Um, and you can search. It has a full database of all these different kinds of fixtures here. So any kind of fixture that's usually out there, you can usually find in here or you can uh, make one. So we've had uh, a couple times had to make our own because we're using like cheap LED tape or something like that. So we're going to type an X4S and we're going to do this one because these lights are set up to be in its normal mode uh, import. So then it'll ask you for how many fixtures are there. There's, there's four. And then a uh, fixture ID, you can basically tell it what fixture ID you want to use. Um, you, could use you could use one, you could use 10, 100. Um, some of the times we work with like in hundreds because then you can put like a group of fixtures at 100, a group of another fixtures at 200. Just kind of, so you can easily remember like, oh, 201 through 204 is this, two, 301 through 304 is this. Um, we're going to leave it at one down here. This fixture patch, patch is um, how you set its DMX address. So this number in front of the um, decimal is its universe. And so uh, we're going to be using universe 1. And then it'll be address 1. And if you have something different, like address 50 or something like that, you would apply it to after the decimal here. Um, so if it's in universe 10, it'd be 10.1 or 10.50, whatever your address is. So uh, we'll apply that. And I will exit. And I'll say, yes, I want to save. And then uh, now the lights are uh, patched. So once the lights are patched, you're going to want to start making presets. So what we're going to start with is making a group. So we're going to say fixture. Uh, one through four, I'll turn them on just to make sure that those are all good. So those are going to, um, yeah, those are right. Yep, we have full control of that. So we're going to say uh, fixture one through four, and we're going to press the store button. it will store it here uh, up in the group palette. So this group, uh, you can see this whole line is the group um, pool. 
Um, so we could save a bunch of different kinds of stuff within here as groups. So like in the main auditorium so, uh, box and stuff like that, you'll see a bunch of different fixtures there with different groups and it's a great way to lump stuff together to make it easy to, to program. So once we have uh, this up here, then we don't have to any longer type in um, fixture one through four. We can just type that and turn them on. So a shortcut to turn stuff on is double tapping at at, and that'll bring it to full. I don't know of a shortcut to take it to zero. Yeah, so uh, you can just press add zero, I'll take it out. Um, another way, another thing that you have to think through is it's at least two different layers of programming. So there's the active programmer, which means all the changes and stuff that you're making um, that you haven't saved yet. Um, and then there is uh, the current fixture selection. So um, when you press clear once, it clears the fixtures that you uh, it clears the selection. So like I have these fixtures selected, if I press clear once, it'll release control of that fixture, but the look is still there. It's still that uh, those fixtures are still within the active programmer. So I could record this, um, but then if I tap it um, once, it clears it out of the active programmer. If you triple tap it, it clears everything. I can't remember exactly what that second one does, but. So you have, so if you clear for the first time, it uh, deselects the pictures. Then you have active, so it's active in the programmer, and then you have it's just alive, just alpha. So if you clear once, uh, yeah. it clears the selection. If you clear twice, the look will still be outputting, but you can't actually store that. So like if you turn them on, and then if you turn the, the lights on, um, and then clear, clear the selection, then you clear it again and try to like to store a queue that turn those lights on, that wouldn't be stored in there because it's not the programmer. Mm -hmm. so that's a pretty common mistake. Yeah. So yeah, just remember that that's what happens when you're pressing clear is that it's doing multiple different things, the amount that you're uh, clearing. So um, it especially is important when you're going to storing queues and updating queues and stuff like that. If you had pressed uh, clear twice and tried to update, it wouldn't update anything because it's no longer saying, hey, here's an active change um, that needs to be stored. And so, um, yeah. So let's make some presets. So let's say I want uh, to have these lights. Um, You know, like so, um, and I want them this way, you know. So I can store that by saying s store and selecting a box here. Uh, if you look up here, there's an S that says selective, so it's only storing these four fixtures that I've been using here. And you have to be careful like when you do a change with these fixtures and you do a change with these fixtures and you do a change with these fixtures and then you record a preset because it's gonna to want to save all of those fixtures that you've been working with um, to this preset, but because we only have four fixtures, it's only gonna save those four. So I could also say um, fixtures two and three, and then I want those actually to, um, uh, just to store these two, so I can do store and you can see how it only stored two fixtures there. So I could you know, jump back to here and it, that these uh, fixtures are recorded in this preset, um, but the other two haven't gone because they're not selected. But if I select this group here with all four fixtures and then go, then they will all be on. Um, and then you just have to turn them on. So that's just a preset, um, uh, position preset. So it just tells the position, not intensity. Um, so uh, within storing, if you uh, let's say let's do something fancy. Look at that. Oh, that's fancy. Um, so I have a preset here. If I press and hold store, it brings up this dialog box here. 
And this is where I can basically uh, select what stuff I want to store. So here's active. So these are the fixtures that are currently active and it could be a, a whole group of different fixtures that you have been recently working on. Or you could say all for selective or active for selective. Um, I'm a little bit gray on what the difference is there. Um, but if you press active for selective, then it's the fixtures you're currently actively working with. Um, you can also do all and look, so. So the difference between the all and active kind of comes down to like, um, before like preset type consoles versus tracking. So the active only stores like the changes that are made. So if I, um, I mean, it doesn't really apply too much in like the, oh, the gotcha. preset, but like if I were storing a queue, um, I can actually say, I want to store this queue and actually all, I can actually go and I can say all four fix the pictures and I'll store everything on it, about everything. So whether it's on, whether it's off, whether it's, where it's focused, it's color, all of that, it's just, <laughs> just like changed. You seeing dots too, huh? Uh, it's like a line like, <laughs> of like just the little dots. Yeah. So then here's all this other stuff too where you have, uh, can you guys see it? Yeah. Okay. So there's program, output, and DMX, and those are some, we typically just do program. Here's kind of where it gets a little interesting because you can say selective. Uh, you can also say global, which is for a certain fixture type or universal, which is for all fixtures. So even if you rec bring in like different brands and stuff like that, they would all try to get to that position or whatnot. So here's some other stuff too. If it says you can um, overwrite a preset, you can merge a preset, uh, remove and release a fixture from a preset if you, w if you needed to. So all those kind of things are in here. So if you're trying to update a preset, that's Here's the settings that you probably want to look for. Um, and this is similar to when you're storing queues, too. You have some of these uh, things. Uh, so now that we have, no. So now that we have this, we don't have gobos, but we do have colors. So we can come down here, be like, uh, I want to store a blue, so if I do store blue, it would store these here. But because it, if it has that S, it's selective, so it's only saying blue th for those fixtures. If you wanted to do blue for all of the fixtures, you could uh, do a store and then select uh, universal. And then... Uh, I'm at Might not do it now that I, um, yep. Blue and then store, select universal, and then save it here. So that would say like any fixture that you bring into your console, it'll try to do that blue color for all of them. So it's a really fast way to like get colors to all the fixtures. Um, so another thing we could do is uh, change the beam, I think, maybe with these ones. Um, I'm gonna store a white one. So we can store beam stuff too. So beam for these guys would just be a shutter. So this is like uh, strobes, um, all that kind of stuff we can store in here. So you can s store this if you wanted to for some odd reason. Um, and then you could store the, uh, the open. So that you can go, you know, back and forth between the two different presets. Other thing that we can add in here is uh, uh, focus stuff. So if you go here, you can s say wide. These guys are growly. 
um, or narrow. So then you can store both of these presets in here. The nice thing about using presets, uh, specifically with um, creating a show and stuff like that, is that you can update the preset and any queue that you have this preset stored into will automatically update in all those queues. So if I had, um, like for the conference I used it where um, I created a, a preset position for, or an all preset actually for front light, um, but because I wasn't in the venue, I wasn't able to um, record that in advance because I didn't know where the lights were gonna land and stuff like that. And so then when I got in there, um, because I, I actually hadn't stored the front light, but I stored back light, but same, same thing where I was able to store that preset into all my cues. And um, even though I didn't know where they were gonna be and stuff like that, but then when I updated that preset, then it tracked all of that information um, into all those cues that had that preset recorded. So it's a really great way to, a really fast way to work to update um, looks and stuff like that, so. Um, yep, so let's say, so how that would work is uh, if I actually wanted to, hey, I have this preset, but it's actually at the wrong spot. If you go to, um, you know, move them where you want, so you, first you select the preset. Um, uh, select the preset, move them where you want, and then if you press update, you will then see that there is this uh, preset update um, dialog box thing here on this side. You're probably used to updating stuff over here if you built keys and stuff like that, but there's also this one over here. So you can say, hey, there's these changes from this preset here. Now if I updated this preset, it would then store that. So now I can go, um, and it will have saved all of that information. So um, it's a really great way to great way to work. So um, so now uh, now that you have your presets built, um, now it's super easy to build cues because you already have you know the positions, the colors, and all that kind of stuff that you want, and then it's just tweaking stuff from there. So you can either tweak it or record that into the queue, or you can update presets or create new presets and um, work from those. So um, any questions so far about that? I don't know how, uh, how much you guys have dived into that, because Cody or whoever set up the box, and um, you guys haven't had to yet. But Any thoughts, Cody? Mm. Any thoughts on that so far? Okay. Um, so yeah, from there, then it's just making cues. So um, let's create a new. Uh, so here's our um, fader page. Um, and these guys over here are view pools. Uh, or I think they're view sheets or whatever. But um, you can actually save different stuff into here. So if I wanted to store this so I could get at it again, you just press store and then save it over here. And you can see how then I can switch back and forth between these kind of different views. So even if you wanted to, you know, uh, do other stuff over here too, you could then store this look. So it gives you a really easy way. So what this is asking for, so this um, console can store up to six different uh, monitors or touchscreens and that kind of stuff. Um, and so if you had them all connected, you could basically quickly control all of them with one click. So if I do an all, then it selects them all, and then I... Uh, click please, and then it would, it would look like this. So. so we have this 
um, these lights right here. Um, so let's start building a queue. So another thing, <laughs> usually with these presets, you want to name them. Uh, are you guys familiar with how to name stuff? No, great. This is awesome. So you just click on the preset, and then you start typing. So this would be uh, up and out. Uh, nope. And then, so these colors are basically named already. Uh, this one would be. Um, So it has the white on there. So now we can do a strobe. No strobe. Oh, keep wanting to right click. Um, and this is uh, wide. Oh, this one's narrow beam. So naming it is always a good practice so that we don't um, forget what's in those uh, presets. So if we select these fixtures, and I want them in a blue, and I want them here, I can store those presets. It's not storing like the fixtures attributes themselves. Um, it's actually storing the presets. So if you look down here and pan and stuff like that, you can see how it says up and out. Um, and so it's actually recording the preset. So if you press store uh, here and then select, um, you can select any one of these buttons within this executor row. They're all five, five, five or whatever. If you select that, um, you can see how it is uh, then stored here. Um, with these boards, because they're not motorized faders, you can see how the fader on uh, the screen here is all the way up, but this is all the way down. When it's blinking, it's saying, hey, the fader's in a different spot than the uh, fader is in the console. So if we bring that all the way up, then you can see how I kind of have control of that. So. Um, so that's our first queue. And then uh, you know you can select uh, the fixtures again, and it will turn it to red, because, hey, red doesn't get much love. Um, so then you press store again, and then you, you can tap the executor again. And it'll say, hey, overwrite, merge, um, remove, all that kind of stuff or create second queue. So overwrite means that it's going to store the information and then wipe what was there. Um, merge means that it's going to merge the two things together and kind of resolve itself um, and then create second queue. So now we have a queue stack, because it's a stack of queues, um, that will go between the two. So there's no fade in it currently, but um, yeah. So this is our queue stack. So. Um, one thing you do is you can press select, which is, uh, you can kind of see right here, it's on the panel here, here select. Um, it's also right here, and then you can select that um, executor. So an executor is basically this row from the top of my finger to the bottom of my finger, including the fader. And this is a different group, this is a different group, this is a different group, this is a different group. Um, this bottom row is a group of executor buttons. So you can control stuff with those buttons as well. It just doesn't have all of these things, but you can still control different stuff with these. Um, and then here's your uh, master playback uh, area. So uh, since I selected that, then it brought it over into the master uh, playback. And you can then use the big buttons in case you have fat fingers. So um, let's say, hey, actually, um, 
Uh, in the second queue, I actually want to change the color. So I'm going to select these fixtures and uh, I actually want a green instead. Um, so once you do that, then uh, it'll highlight the update button. If this button is lit up, then it, it recognizes that something has changed within that queue. So you can press update and it'll bring up this dialog box. So um, this is where the tracking and um, uh, conversation kind of comes into play because you can actually, if uh, these lights were both blue um, and you assigned it in Q1 and it uh, tracked into Q2, you can actually say, hey, I want to update to red and it'll say, hey, actually, do you want to update Q1 because that's where it last had its assignment or do you want to change it within this queue? So it's not saying it right now because we actually have a different color in there already. Um, so why don't we actually, let's recreate that because that's where a lot of people get tripped up. Um, so these lights at this position, let's do narrow, um, let's do white. <coughs> so we'll store this, star button is down here, uh, at Q5 or executor five. So you can see that's, this is one way to, you can check to make sure that you actually recorded what you want. Um, and then let's do, um, we need to do a second queue so we can do strobe and Q2, because that's fun. And create a second queue. So now when uh, select and then this executor row, now when I go back and forth, you can see how it turns on and off. So if you look here, um, you'll see I'm in Q1 now, I'm in Q2, and now that I'm in Q2, I want to say, uh, or you could say, hey, I actually want to change it to a blue strobe. So if you select blue um, and press update, then you'll see here, um, you know, do you want to update in Q2 here, or do you want to update in Q1? And that, for some reason, that's backwards than it usually is. I it's that like it's in the show file. Probably it's in the show file, you can change what it equals to. Gotcha. That's why totally switched. So I could update Q1. And then if I cleared it, um, triple clear, you'll see that it tracks blue into both of those queues because it updated Q1 and then it tracked it through into Q2. So. Um, So I'm gonna put the white back. So now if I update and want blue, uh, what queue am I in? Q2, blue. And then if I press update and I say, actually I want to update this color in Q2. So you just have to read kind of what that says there. Um, then you can kind of see how um, Q1 kept white and then Q2 is now blue just because of the, where it recorded it, so. Um, so yeah, that's a basic setup for recording cues and, um, yeah, creating presets, which is like really base level as far as being able to get up and running for doing lighting. So, um, any questions with that? Anything that is unfamiliar that I need to go over? Have five minutes. So. Did I miss anything, Cody? Oh, you guys did cover. So... That's pretty basic and that's like a lot of the stuff is like the presets are already pre-built for most of the things. So really it's the update or creating the cues that tends to trip people up, specifically when they're going to update cues. Um, and the kind of the formula is if you're creating a new queue, it's a store. If you're um, changing a queue that's already created, then you're using update, you're updating a queue. So. Um, some of this other stuff we don't use a lot of. So there's um, whole sections on this board that I don't even know if I've actually tapped a button before, like a preview or freeze and stuff like that. I don't think I've ever had to do that. Um, so uh, 
the next class will be more like in depth about creating cues and, and whatnot and using potentially effects and whatnot and how those work. Um, but yeah, at, with that kind of knowledge that we've covered so far, you guys can easily get up and running in the box or South Auditorium and all that kind of stuff and, and weekend and whatnot. So um, after this, it's basically just lots of practice so you can kind of get into the groove and get your, get your head wrapped around how tracking works and, and updating the cues and stuff like that. So cool. Well, thanks, guys.